Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to 100 days of hardcore Ark Survival Evolved on the Aberration map. Hey yo, what's up? Couple of mentions before we begin. As always, Luke the Notable for the 100 days idea. And I cannot pick just one YouTuber for helping me out with this uh, video because I watched a lot of content. For me, a huge big thank you to the Ark YouTube community. So, what are we waiting for? Let's begin. Ah uh, yes, aberration. I'm gonna be a bit honest here. I wasn't feeling this map. I mean, I was scared and nervous and I doubted that I'd survive the whole entire 100 days. Yeah, I know this, this map is quite difficult. Coupled with those mushroom juices, which might I add, almost died twice to didn't quite make for our first day great experience although we did find a good spot to place down our little shack so uh yeah uh, that was the upside to day one i suppose day two was quite eventful we firstly went ahead to tame our first light pet which was the bulb dog the easiest one you could find here i also didn't realize you could experience earthquakes here on aberration it worked out to our advantage because it gave us some really cool resources hence why i have a spyglass i also went ahead and upgraded our base and took on a giant freaking crab why because i'm camps Run camps <laughs> yo watch out ah not so tough now, are you, Mr. Krabs? Now don't you run away from me now. Come back here. Ah, oh, frick. The mole gotcha. Brep. Yeah, I needed a rideable mount. The easiest thing we could tame at the moment was a parasol. And luckily, we found a low-level one just close to base. So we bowled it and used our club. If only it was that simple. Wait, why me? Why? But eventually, we did get the parasol. Steve! Stevie! Steve! Day 4 was just mad. Got a lot of work done around base, got our shack upgraded to wood tier, got some ladders and some ramps for easy access. We also had to take on a goner. Poor Stevie. What a champ. Wait, that's not what's supposed to happen. Well, that's much better. Super close though. Yeah. From there we just tranked it and managed to knock it out. The only other bummer is we didn't have enough levels for its saddle. Great stuff. I was kind of overwhelmed with the things that I needed to do here on Aberration and also it being Aberration. Yeah, I, I, was, I was struggling. I was really struggling. So day five, we just stayed back at base and worked on it a bit. Um, we got our smithy, we got our metal tools and weapons, and there was a tech parasol, which we could get some really cool resources from, so I decided to take that on. That was pretty much the fun stuff for day 5, right? <laughs> Day 6, I spotted a high-level Ravager close by, but first I needed to take care of some of the creatures around the area. I then went ahead and placed down my taming pin, this time in stone and a little bit bigger. Yeah, I learned from my past experiences not to mess with these things. It was with a pack, so trying to single it out was proving to be difficult, so I just had to wait for the perfect moment. I got you on my tail now, son. Easy a pieces. There we go. Now, I just have to take care of your little friend here. Then I had a trank it, knock it out, and, well, this mutton. Sweet. Day 7, I decided to take what valuable stuff I had here at base and move out. Yes, I remembered a really cool spot that I played many 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 moods ago and i wanted to find it with stevie and our ravages we set out hoping to reach our destination i have some good news and some bad news the good news is we made it to our spot the bad news is we lost steve to a raptor rep. I also needed to lay down a whole lot of piping because our base was so far from any source of water and on aberration for some reason your water drains really quickly. Water at base is a must. It was crazy but I believe we could do it. Yep, you guessed it. I was still working on the piping. Like I said, 
It was crazy. Really crazy. Finally, day 10, we were finished with our piping work. We had water at our base. We even had a zip line. How cool is that? Look at this. Water at base. No more water problems. I also went ahead and laid down a few structures just to get things going. And guess what? A backyard full of metal and keratin. How freaking insane is that? Day 11, I settled down at our main base. Things was looking really good for us. But we needed a new berry collector. So we went ahead and tamed Steve 2.0. Yeah, another really high level parasol this time around. And while waiting for it to tame up, I decided to go ahead to our starter base and grab the things that we forgot to bring along with us the first time around. Day 12, I had enough resources to craft my fabricator, though placing it down was a bit of a problem because we didn't have space around our base. So I had to hold on to it for a little while. I then went ahead to tame a Dodicarus. Now this one's a, a bit of a high level one, so tranking it was... Uh, oh snap, hold on. Ah, there we go. Yeah, as I was saying, tranking it was was actually not a problem. It just took a lot of my arrows, but we did manage to knock it down eventually. Day 13, back at base, we did a whole lot of work. I mean, a whole lot. We got a Fabi, we got a Jenny, we even got some lights so we can actually see what we're doing at night because it gets really dark here. I also had enough resources to craft a few cryopods. The only problem was uh, we needed a drop to actually go and craft these. And also, my Dodicker has finally teamed up. Yeah, took a whole freaking day. Now that I finally had my cryopod, I decided to wander about for a little bit. Yeah, I needed some tames, of course. For instance, we needed some harvesting dinos. First up was the Yankee. And I believe we could find some at the Bioluminous or Blue Biome. But lucky enough, we did find a couple just at the border of that dangerous biome. Apparently that's where the nameless spawn in. So I was happy not to go into it. We then proceeded to trank the little bugger and we managed to get it down to God its little friend. Then waited for it to tame up. Day 15 I decided I needed more freaking muscle. Yeah because uh, running around with our Ravager wasn't really the sort of thing I'd like or felt comfortable with. So I headed back to our starter base where I found a really good level Spino. I then went ahead and placed down my taming pen. We had a bit of a hiccup there and there because somehow we weren't able to place down freaking structures. I don't know what's going on there, but yeah. So I had to improvise. I then had to clear the area of all dinos so the Spino didn't get distracted. Then try to kite the Spino in, which was a bit tricky, of course and hoped that the taming pen would work, which it did, thankfully. And then we just tranked it and we had a Spino. We were kings, kings of aberration. Day 16, yeah, we were just a couple levels shy from our Spino saddle. So I took the day to go and level up. We had a good sword and just slashing everything in sight helped us to get the levels we need. Yeah, Spino saddle, here we come. Aha, the rain. Of our Spino. Yeah, I just decided to level the Spino up this day. Yeah, the best way that I knew from the last time we played, which was many years ago with my trimates, was to just go down the river and uh, snack on the little fishies. Yeah, who would have thought? Super levels from them. You know, I can't remember if we could stab fishies back then. Though I must say, is really satisfying. Sorry, I'm just gonna borrow this. Sorry, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Run, yeah, run. Yeah, you don't scare me, son. I've got a spino. Just letting you live, because I feel like it. Anyways, I needed those red gems. We needed to craft a gas collector to collect gas. What else would you need it for? Day 19, we took a stroll to the blue zone where I thought I could find some high level Megalosauruses because, uh, yeah, turns out they're pretty good on the aberration. Though we didn't end up with any luck this time around. Uh, we then took out a couple of rock drakes because they thought they could boss us around. You better think again, punk! This is why I tamed the spine. They're beasts, man, they're beasts. I also went ahead and found a couple of obsidian nodes and got some obsidian, which is always a great thing. Yeah, 
I bet you want to know what I'm building here. Okay. All I can tell you is that it's a raft. And it's going to be an interesting one. You just got to have to wait and see. BTW. I came up with this idea. How cool is that? Day 21. Finally, I was done with my raft bolt. You'd get to see it in a bit. But first, I needed to go and search for some high level crabs. So off we went with my spino. We did see a couple of crabs, but there was one in particular that I really wanted to tame. Though we needed to single it out. So uh, lucky enough, I was able to take out one of its friends. There we go. The crab number 3. Thousand. How freaking insane is this? Let me tell you something. This works like a charm. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. All you have to do is drive the raft straight through the crab's legs and... Okay, okay, this wasn't the perfect example, but we can improvise here, right? FYI, for a perfect catch, the crab needs to be in the water. What the freak? Where's my crab? Okay, so now let me show you how it's really done. Watch this. Booyah! Easy as pie, right? <laughs> okay, so I got to take this back to our little safe spot so we can tame it. Here, yeah, this was a bit of a difficult part. Firstly, I forgot where we needed to hit the crab in order to knock it out. Yeah, so it was all just uh, trial and error from here. So I had to play with the uh, aim settings, of course, because it was kind of difficult for me to see. But, I mean, yeah, success! <laughs> Lost! This is so freaking cool! Look at this! Yeah! Bye! Have a great day! Oh man, I had crab fever. So, um, now that I know how to tame crabs, I mean, there's no stopping me now. Uh, yeah, I spotted another freaking high level. Look at that. So I had to tame it. I just had to tame it. And we did. It was easy now. Day 24, I was all excited and stuff because now that we have crabs, I believed we could pick up just about everything on Aberration. Yeah, so I went to the blue biome to, well, go and tame some Megalosauruses. Because, um, yeah, we had a crab. We could pick things up, right? Wrong, Gamps! Wrong! You cannot pick up Megalos! Why didn't someone tell me this? Anyways, uh, we settled for a Nanki instead. Well, we needed two Ankies. Now that we have crabs, we can farm quite easily. Oh, and a Shinehorn. Oh, yeah. This was the best way to farm metal. Metal grind. You wouldn't believe it, but I found another high level crab. Yeah, I tamed it too. Of course I would. The king of crabs. Yeah. Day 27. Now that we have a good supply of metal, I decided to go ahead and do some work around base. Yeah, put up some more lighting and it, well, it did look really good. I then went ahead and decided to take advantage of the longer night. So with my Ravager and Spino, we went to the surface. I was, of course, a bit afraid because there are Reapers and stuff there. So we didn't venture out too much, though we did find oil nodes. So, uh, yeah. We got all supply close by. I then heard some reaper noises and chickened out, man. Just chickened out. <laughs> it was time for us to go deeper into aberration. Yeah, get our first rock drake. It was quite easy because I knew of a way that my tribates and I used to use a very long time ago. So getting down there wasn't the difficult part. Plus, I had a high level spino, which could take on just about anything. We just had to go down to this part and drop with our spino. Spino. The way to get back up is to cry your Spino, of course, and then use your climbing pick, so that wasn't a problem. And then we had to make our way down to this part of the map, where we find rock drakes in their megs. You have to have your hazmat suit on, of course. The tricky part is trying to get the, <laughs> the egg, because um, once you get it, it's a like the Scorched Earth map, where all of them wyverns come after you. So here, all of them rock drakes will come after you. But we had a soldier to defend us. Yeah. So we just grabbed the egg and wrecked whatever came in our path. We got an egg. Sweet. Day 29, we made it. Back at base, we had to go ahead and build a hatchery for our rock drake. These things needed a whole lot of ACs, so we had to do some grinding, of course. I can't really remember how many ACs we built, but it was a lot. Darn freaking rock drakes. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Rock Drake hatchery. This time we had everything that needed for the Rock Drake eggs to hatch. And it did. We had twins. But there was a slight problem. We needed nameless venom in order for them to mature without dying. There we go. Nameless venom sorted. Oh man. We had to go back down to the freaking scariest place of aberration. You know, even though I had an OP spiner, I still got the chills whenever I went down there. Ooh. Yeah, I needed to go back down there to get some red gems. Why? Well, if you don't know, then you're not a true arc player. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's for the rock drake saddle. Oh yeah. Unleash the big head. <laughs> I just went ahead and leveled up my rock trick. The only way I know how to eat all them fishies. Yeah, I had something planned, so I needed the levels. The next couple of days, I worked on a wooden elevator. Yeah, I wanted to build something cool for my larger dinos, so we can get them in and out of the base a bit more easier than trying to always cry upon them. Besides, I, I wanted to pull something cool. Day 35, I somehow had the courage to try out my first cave. Well, I needed to do them, of course, because I need them artifacts. So, um, yeah. Just on the side note, don't believe freaking tutorials they put up on YouTube. They aren't easy. They're difficult. Well, except for this one. This one was somehow the easiest. So I was much grateful for it. With my somewhat leveled rock drake, we managed to get our first artifact. And this was the artifact of the stalker. Oh, ho, ho. this was the day I tag team with my rock drake and spino to get myself a really high leveled rock drake. I know it's not max level, but it was super high, so it was really cool. Though <laughs> we almost lost our freaking Spino, and if we lost it, we would be dead. So, yay! <laughs> We made it out alive! Thank you! So, I'm guessing you know what I did next, right? Yeah! I ate ham! Huh? What are you talking about? Nah, I went ahead and hatched my rock drake. Yeah, I couldn't wait to see its stats. And also, we needed some nameless venom, so we went and got that as well. What a beautiful day. Day 38, whilst leveling up my new rock drake, I spotted an alpha basilisk. So I thought it was a good idea to go and take it on. It would have given us a whole lot of levels if we actually took it out. Yeah, um, those things are freaking OP. <laughs> it did a whole lot of damage to my rock drake and to me. So I had to bail. Oh man, you win some, you lose some. Holy crap. I went to the blue biome in search of a high level megalosaurus. And what did I find? A freaking 145 megalo. The freak's going on here, son. Anyways, I had a pre bolt taming pen in my spino. I just had to find a good spot to place it down. Kite the megalo into the taming pen. From there, it was as good as tamed. Nighty night, snookums. Day 40. Well, you guessed it. Now that we had our megalosaurus, we had to go and level it up. Did I just realize how freaking OP these things are? You have to get one of these if you're on aberration. It just totally annihilates everything. It's just crazy. With the resources I collected with the Megalosaurus, I went ahead and crafted myself some scuba gear. We'll need it soon. Day 41, I was looking for a queen bee or a dire bear to tame because, well, we needed some honey. The queen bee, however, proved difficult to find. So I went for the dire bear, which I had some things prepared in advance to tame. Luckily enough, there was one close by. So all we had to do was use the spino taming pen and kite the dire bear in there, then proceeded to drink it, knock it out, and tame the great fluff ball. <sighs> Finally, after a day's worth of freaking looking for some honey, we freaking found some honey. Freaking honey! Why it's so difficult to find honey? Wah! Well, we got some at the end of the day at least. So, yeah, thankfully. Ah, oh, there we go. This was what all the honey fuss was all about. Yeah, to tame a rogue rat, because that's what you need to tame them. What you have to do is, when they burrow into the world, drop the honey on top of their little burrowing hole. And when they pop up, well, that's how they grab the honey and eat it. So we just had to do that a couple of times. And uh, bada bing, bada boom, the rogue rat was out. I don't know why, but I wasn't particularly 
really keen on taking on some of the aberration caves. Well, all of them, because uh, they were scurry. Maybe because I got jumped twice by a freaking raptor. Maybe that could be. But we had to do them, of course, because we need the artifacts. Nonetheless, I carried on with whatever little courage bestowed upon camps. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I was simply just scared for them caves. I don't know how I made it, but this one by sheer luck, we got out there alive and with the artifact. So I wanted to keep my strategy for the boss fight open. On day 45, I spotted a high level Tex Dego, which most strats go for this kind of thing because of its HP. Yeah, I did the sensible thing and tamed it. I also tamed the Lystro, does that count? Day 46, I thought it would be a great idea to start a Spino army to have with me for the boss fight. Lucky enough, we did spot a high level Spino close by. So, I had placed down my taming pin, got rid of the unwanted, and kited the Spino in with my Ravager. From there on end, we needed to just drink it and feed it some prime meat, and the Spino was out. And as a bonus, it had a cool Christmas card. Yeah, I had the Winter Wonderland event on. Day 47, I decided to take advantage of the longer nights to do some drop hunting. Now that I have an OP freaking rock drake, I wasn't that scared. I was still a bit afraid, but not totally afraid where I couldn't go and grab a couple of drops. So that's what we did. And yeah, we did spot a few, but this one in particular was really cool. Look at how awesome this is. And we got an Ascended Roll Rat Saddle. Sweet. Day 48, I spotted an Alpha Basilisk. I'm not sure if it was the same one, but I was determined to show it who is boss. Oh yeah. With my Spino, we took it on. Let's just say, it didn't live to tell the tale. Day 49, after coming back from our drop hunt, whoa. This is what we got. Freaking insane stuff. All BPs. So, yeah, it's gonna be really difficult to get these things. Also, on day 49, we found another high level Spino, which we kited into our taming pen. You know how it goes. Tame it. Yes, it's day 50, and it's a quick one. Metal grind. Day 51, I decided to go ahead and hatch a couple of Spino eggs just to see what kind of stats we'd get from them. Yeah, it wasn't that great, but we did find a couple of Spinos that we could work with, so it's all good. Day 52 to 54, I decided to work on upgrading my base. As per usual, I do not have a blueprint for these things, rather just an idea of what I'd want the base to look like. Yeah. Yes, there's a couple of conditions that I needed to tick, which was the hatchery, workshop, and a walkway for easy dino access. At the end of it, this is what I came up with. Yep, I had all the right farming dinos to help with this process, so it wasn't that difficult. It did need a few finishing touches, but we take care of it later on. Day 55, we started working on getting ourselves a chemistry bench. The problem was not getting the resources for crafting cementing paste, rather the speed and getting a chemistry bench would sort that problem out. We set out to get the necessary resources to craft it. And just like that, we were in the game. So, with the help of the chemistry bench, we were able to craft the next big thing, the Endy Forge. Now we're totally in the game. Day 57, considering we had a shorter day, I was in the mood for walking around base. My next project was to light up the tunnel where I kept my dinos. I know it didn't look pleasing to the eye, but at least it got the job done. Right? That's all that counts. There! That looks much better. I then went ahead to work on my Spinos once more. I still needed a good pair of Spinos with some great stats, so we can get that line into action. Oh yes, finally, some Spinos we can work with. They did have a great set of stats, not the greatest, but I mean, they would work. Surely, they would. Da da da! My Spino Army! Yes, five of the best stats of Spinos I could possibly breed. Okay, so it wasn't the greatest, but <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it would work. Besides, they have cool colors. That much I do like. Black and red, 
But wait, my face, bro. Let's go. It's like a little Christmas candy party. Day 62, I decided to work on my greenhouse. Of course, we needed it to get some of the crops that we would need to craft some of the recipes. This time, I went for a smaller version of what I normally build because I kind of figured we wouldn't need that much crops. But, I mean, nonetheless, we needed a greenhouse. Day 63, done with our greenhouse build, there was still a piece missing. Can you guess what it is? Yes, we needed an indie cooker because we could craft things faster. Yeah, I wouldn't want to have to wait a million years for just one item. So, we went out to go and get the resources required to craft the indie cooker. And once we had them, we had the power to forge the greatest cooking item on Ark. The industrial cooker. Dun -dun. Oh, this right here is our cute little greenhouse. Do you like pincers? Oh, I love a pair of big beautiful pincers. Oh mama. Anyways, we needed to complete our greenhouse build, so I took one of my Christmassy looking crabs into the blue biome, which is at the border, to grab a couple of dung beetles, to take it back to base, to tame them. Poop! We need poop! More poop! Oh, there we go. That's why we needed poop. Dung beetles! Tamed J65. Well, nothing much happened except for an epic metal grind. Uh, what the heck? I guess I should start working on those ascendant blueprints. I'm gonna be needing a whole lot of grinding for that, especially for that polymer. Let's get it on, bro. Yeah, day 67. Again, I decided to take advantage of the longer nights. So we went up to the surface with our rock drake to go for some drop hunting. This time we did find a couple of drops that gave us some really cool items. First stop was the freaking purple drop. Sweet. Ascendant chitin armor with a blueprint for a roll rat saddle. Oh wee, that's much better. I still was scared of the surface so, so as fast as I got up here is as fast as I went down. Day 68, I finally found the courage to do my last cave. Yes, I needed this artifact. Whoa, it was in a bad spot. This cave was just crazy because it was under and I was dreading it because of all the creatures that I've seen that live under these caves. And uh, I, was, I was scared because I didn't know whether my crab would fit through all them spaces. Though I must be totally honest here, it wasn't that bad of a cave with... Uh, the dinos I had. Just, just this one part where I just scraped it by freaking inches. Yo, it could have cost me my life, but uh, we made it and eventually went up to the artifact. Man, we bagged it. Yeah, Kibs did it, man. All them caves done. I don't want to do this again. Day 69 at the border of the blue zone I spotted a high level megalosaurus. I just needed to put down my taming pen and kite the megalo in. So I thought it would be that easy. Man, was this a feisty little fella who was doing crazy damage to my spino. At one point I almost thought that I was gonna lose my spino because of its big freaking sloppy movements. Anyways, we did manage to get the Megalo in. I had another problem. My crossbow was about to break. So I had to go back to base to repair it and get a couple of other stuff at the same time. And come back to where I captured the Megalo, drank it. That was the easiest part. And yeah, well, the Megalo was ours. Day 70 to 71, we started breeding our Megalos. Yes, we needed a couple of good Megalos to do the boss fight. This was just the beginning, so I just hatched a couple of eggs, hoping to get some good stats. Ah, oh, twins. So sweet. By day 72, we started to see some progress. We even got some mutations on the melee. And guess what that means? Back to the drawing board. We need to reset our breeding line. Yeah, I'm still trying to gel these stats together. Day 74, finally we got our set of breeder megalos. Yes, these are the megalos with the stats that I wanted for my boss fight. Yeah, it's only taken a couple of days, right? But hey, 
We got it done and we're ready to go. Yeah, I would still have to go and level up all of my dinos. Just so you know. Day 75. Ho ho ho. This is where the big guns come out. Yeah, we needed some Reaper Pheromone. Something like that. The, all I knew, we had to go and take out some Reapers. And that's how you'd get some Reaper Pheromones or Reaper Glands. Whatever you call it. Yeah, I, I felt confident enough to take on these little screeds. We fought one until it's dead. Though we did not get any freaking reaper pheromone or gland, wh whatever you call it. Anyways, we tried on another one. Yeah, we fought it to its death. And yet again, we didn't get any pheromones or glands. Yeah, quite a uh, sad thing, really. Oh, dummy. It's in their body. You're not supposed to eat their body. Cams. I then thought it was a great idea to go ahead and tame one of these reapers. Keep in mind, I haven't tamed a reaper before in my life, so I don't really know how it's supposed to work. All I know is you have to do damage to it and wait for it to stick you with its tail. Yeah, it was going all well until a second reaper showed up. By then, I was terrified, so I found the first opportunity to bail. Day 77, I was back for more reaper action. This time, I was prepared I came with my magnifying glass to see what kind of damage I'll be doing to the Reaper and to keep its health in check. I was in the groove here I was just chomping on the Reaper waiting for the perfect time to stop and just chill. I think I was chilling a bit too much because I uh, somehow forgot to turn the lights off and well that just messed up the taming thingamabopsy whatever you call it well some of the nameless spawn and my rock trick health was super super low. I waited as long as I could. Couldn't wait any longer. If I did, I would have been dead. So yeah, I failed. <laughs> Dismally. Seems like I would never tame a reaper. Oh darn it. <laughs> you thought I was gonna give up that easy? Nah. This time I came prepared. I knew what to expect, what to do. And I was determined to get myself a reaper. If this was the first time I ever got a Reaper, it would have to be in this video. Oof, it was a bit risky and a bit of stupidity, but I got it done, man. I got the Reaper to stick me. <laughs> what the freak? Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, then I had to go and level up the little thingamabobsy that was inside of me. That wasn't too difficult. We had a freaking bad freaking rock drake. I then had to rush back to base where I built a little box for the specific tame and watch it explode from my chest. I also did some research where it did say that if you do cry upon this little thingamabobsy that it wouldn't go all crazy like. So yeah, I had to try it out, man. Alrighty, the moment of truth! Ah, there we go. Well, it seems to be cool with us, right? Well, what am I supposed to know? It's my first time. I don't know anything about this. But it does give me an idea. What if... What if... We start a Reaper army? Now that sounds cool, doesn't it? Yeah, I went ahead and got myself another Reaper. Booyah, we've got two this time. This was so cool now that I know how to tame Reapers. It was quite easy for me. I mean, there's nothing really I can't do now. Except the boss. I'm still scared about that boss. It looks intimidating. Day 80. Well, I just took this time to chill, man. I've never actually tamed a Reaper, so I wanted to enjoy it. So, I took it on a joyride, just destroying everything in its path, and while well, getting some levels at the same time. It's a win-win. Alrighty, it's day 81 and just a couple more days for us to go and face the boss. So I had to use these days wisely. Yeah, you know, we're just gonna speed it up because these are the days that I used to prep up for the boss fight. Day 81 and 82, I went ahead and grabbed two more Reapers. Yeah, I thought four Reapers would do the job, so these two completed the squad. Day 83 I went ahead to level up the two new Reapers. Also I thought that I would go with a the theme of naming my Reapers. 
Did you figure it out? Oh yeah, on this day I found this beautiful piece of metal. Doesn't it look juicy? Also I went ahead to prep up my Spino saddles. So we could take those to train up. Yeah, well now that we had the Spino saddles, daily 4 to 86, we went ahead to level them up. We went through the entire green zone, the starter zone, whatever you call it, to just find everything and anything we could shred. And yeah, we got crazy amounts of levels. I found that spinals give more levels than anything else. So it was all good. Cannibals. Oh yes, it was time to work on those Megalo saddles. Yeah, we had quite a few of them, so we had to make quite a few saddles. Oh, I just love the grind. Oh yes, we took some time off to do some drop hunting. This wasn't that easy though, because we had to take care of a couple of scripts that were in the way. Uh, not that the drops were any good though, so uh, you know what, at least we tried, right? Ooh, 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 guess what? I found an ascended shotgun and an ascended assault rifle. Yeah, the items, not blueprints, so it was really good. Though it was a bit uh, less damage than my BPs, but hey, I don't care because we don't have to craft it. Though I do have to craft some ammo, so that's what I needed to work on. Yeah, get tons and tons and tons of ammo. Day 90 to 94, we took our Megalos to level up. Now, these were a bit different because, of course, they were a bit smaller and couldn't move that fast in water. But, might I add, they do some serious amount of damage. I got them over like a K damage. It's just insane. It was insane. I love it. I love it. Uh, I was thinking at that time whether I should change my Spinos for Megalos. But I just didn't have time to breed more spinos and stuff, so I had to scratch that idea. Day 95, we had to do some more grinding to top up the ammo. Yeah, it required loads and loads of materials. So, man, someone's got to do it. It is me. <laughs> me. Yeah, I'm still busy with ammo. Well, at least you can get a look at my pump shotty. Looks amazing, doesn't it? Day 97, so freaking close. Crazy, crazy how time flies. So, this day I took it upon myself to work on my armor. Well, of course, we just had a few blueprints. So, um, yeah, nothing major there. I'm hoping all the sets of armor helps. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Rip cam. Day 98 with almost everything prepped up there was just one last thing to do. Yeah, I needed some cryopods to transport my dinos to the bus terminal. Yeah, well we went up to the surface and yeah, did our business. Bros. At night, of course. Yeah, peeps, we were almost ready. We had our dinos trained up, we had our ammo, our armor, we had some med brews. All I needed to do was pack up and leave. I also decided to go ahead and group my dinos. Thought it would be a good idea because of the boss fight. Maybe we could manage them a bit better. Although I don't really know because it was kind of crazy at the boss fights. Anyways, you'll see what happens. Let's go.